Oh god. Just look at the state of this now, it's a paddling pool. God damn this tent. Oh no. Hello there guys, welcome back. As you can see I'm walking into the woods here and uh, today's mission is uh, trying out some sheen or shine, I don't know how you say it, camping gear. So we'll see how that goes. We've uh, got rain coming early hours, but um, should be clear skies till the evening at least. So I could do some campfire cooking and stuff and I've got a load of interesting stuff to show you off this site. Tried to uh, get the more interesting looking things to try out and well, probably have a laugh with. So better get to camp. good to be in these woods. I've not been here for over a month now. I've had a trail camera out the whole time, one that I'm trying out for a review, so I'll have to collect that a bit later. Not in the morning, because it's going to be pouring, so I'd rather do it sooner than later. Um, but that's up the opposite side of the woods. Um, so like I said, I've bought a Sheen camping setup. Um, I'm going to pronounce it that way, I don't know how you do. I hadn't heard of the uh, website until someone commented and said do a Sheen camp. I think they're mainly aimed at girls, the, um, clothing, that sort of thing. But I found a few camping things on there. There's a couple of things I couldn't get. So I've got as full a setup as I could. And I'll run through them as I get them out and set them up and use them and stuff. Um, first up is the backpack. I'm going to have to refer to my <laughs> list that I've got on my phone quite a lot here. But this is the backpack, which is apparently 80 litres. I'd be surprised if it's 60. <laughs> and it cost uh, 20 pounds and 25 pence. Um, it's not that bad actually. I did break off two straps, which I think go around the sides, um, just when I was getting it out and trying it out and you know putting the straps together in that. But um, so far, it's not too bad. It's not 80 liters for sure, um, but uh, seems okay. I've got a flat front pocket, two side pockets, which you could probably put a bottle in. I haven't right now. I've got my camera bag with me with the water and that. And a pocket down the bottom. It's not access to the inside of the pack though for getting sleeping bags out the bottom and stuff. Molly webbing, Velcro. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not awful. It's um, probably better than the last one from, what was it? Um, Timu camp. <laughs> It was definitely a lot more comfortable than the Timu one anyway, but that one probably was 80 litre. It just didn't sit on your hips very well. Um, so that's the backpack and uh, I'm going to have to get the tent out and set that up first. So whatever, you'll look at that. So this is definitely not the smallest of tents, but I tried to keep this interesting. This one is a pop-up tent. Um, it looks bigger than that last pop-up tent I used. Wish.com video? <laughs> I don't know, I've done a couple of these now. So um, yeah, it would be interesting to see. And I'm praying it's waterproof, unlike the last one. <laughs> Let's have a look at it. Seem to have the rain fly, the tent itself, some poles in the bottom there, and the instructions. Oh, the poles are for like an awning, because this is pop-up. Right, with these pop-up tents you tend to have to unfold them a bit before they can do the popping up. They're kind of like a flower. This looks very similar to the other one. I think I've got to stand in it a bit. Okay, it's actually pretty big. I'm quite happy with that. Well, space-wise at least. Um, went up very, very easily as they do. If only they could collapse down a bit more. Now, just to spread it out properly, I've got to um, put the pegs in. And uh, we'll see how big it actually is. Wow, toothpicks.
right, it's pretty roomy in there. I think it's bigger than the last pop-up one, but I think it's roughly the same as the inflatable one I had from Timu. Now, as you can see, this is rolled up for now. I'm going to uh, put that out as an awning with the poles in a minute. Got a freeway zip on the inner there. Has an inner. Well, has an inner over the doors. And you've got uh, another door that side. And I think it looks like two mesh windows as well. Yeah, two mesh windows on the side. Good in summer, not so good right now. <laughs> There's our poles. It's not much of a rain fly, but I'm going to need it. Well, that's the rain fly, what there is of it. A lot of these cheaper tents just have a little one that goes on top with the vents underneath. It's got double stitching, um, quite wide gaps and stuff. No sign of any seam sealing or anything. <laughs> Bodes well. That's the pole spun round. I think that's going to work a lot better. Uh, these pegs, all they want to do is bend and spin. <laughs> we have to put a couple in. So this tent, which I don't have too much trust in in the rain, is £94.95. It's the most expensive thing I've uh, bought on this Sheen camp. Now the setup and layout of it and everything's nice. It's a nice size and everything. It's great that it collapses. I just have no trust in the rain. Um, yeah, the zips don't look waterproof. The stitching doesn't look waterproof. Nothing is seam sealed. I guess you could seam seal it. This awning is more of a sun awning because it's just going to direct that rain straight back towards the tent and come down where the zips are. But we'll find all this out in the morning. I think it's supposed to rain about 3am to 4am and um, yeah, sun's up, god, I don't know, half seven, something like that, maybe even closer to eight. Um, yeah, <laughs> it has uh, no branding whatsoever. I'm pretty sure I've seen this on AliExpress and stuff as well. So let's check what's next in Un Sac Magique. All right. Is it this? No. Ah, I believe it's this. This should be the mat. And there doesn't seem to be very much, oh, we've got a puncture patch, much choice in these on these Chinese sites. So I'm suspicious this is the same as one of the other ones I've used and no my luck, not the one that was actually quite comfortable. Ooh, doesn't look too bad, it's still got them poppers so you can join them together. And I think it has a pump in it. So here's that pump. It's like a sponge that kind of sucks the air through the vent and then you push it down, it goes into the mat. There's the mat, it was easier just to blow into it than use that uh, pump, it was quite slow. But if you're short of breath or sank, I guess it could work. Um, yeah, it looks like the fatter one, the same as another one I've used before. Not a bad mat actually. Now the mat was £29.75, it's meant to be 10 centimetres thick, which is a good thickness for a, a mat to be honest. Uh, it's got kind of a, a pillow as well of sorts, and um, if it is like the one I used before, it was quite good, I think. <laughs> This is the sleeping bag, um, limit minus 8 C, uh, comfort 8 degrees C, that's quite a big difference there <laughs> for adults, um, 1.5 kilograms, uh, Jungle King Sleeping, CY0903, now this was £36.50, um, seemed to be the biggest as in more wintry sleeping bag they had, um, I've got thermals with me to help out, tonight the nearest town, I think, said uh, two degrees. Um, so out here, one or zero. 
so pretty much a freezing night. And this is a nice green and black colour by the looks of it. There she is, doesn't look too bad, it's not down or anything. But um, yeah, get a good test tonight. One worrying thing I'm seeing is obviously the ground is quite wet, it's been raining non-stop. And I'm seeing darker patches. Now I'm quite dry, so I'm thinking the ground sheet is not very waterproof. So that's basically our sleep system for tonight, all set up. I've got quite a few other things to try out. Now one of them is this. Couldn't find any real camping chairs on there. And this was the most interesting thing I could find. Let's see how this goes together. All right, so what's in here? Some kind of legs or something. I think I need to look at the picture of this again. <laughs> oh, no I don't, look how easy that is. One in there. And the other one, oh that's a bit tight, in there, just like that I guess. Oh. Right so I've got to lean back on this now. It works, I mean you're pretty much on the ground, there's a very slight bit of padding on the bottom, nothing on the back. I wouldn't say the most comfortable thing, it kind of pinches your back, but I mean it's a lot smaller and lighter than a chair and the most important thing with having a chair is that back support really starts to wake after a while when you're camping without a chair but uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes I nearly forgot then, the chair was £16.50 which, is that worth it? <laughs> I don't know, we'll see Sorry, just had a sausage roll for my lunch that I brought with me. Now I should reiterate to those of you who didn't see the other videos, this is not me sponsored or endorsing these companies. It's just for entertainment purposes really. Often the stuff is too expensive for what it is. Um, there's hidden costs. Um, they try and con you, I'll show you something later. Um, got conned with the water bottle last time. And um, yeah, it's just not worth it basically. Plus a lot of these companies have some pretty shoddy records. Now, back to the task at hand, saws. Now, I got a couple of saws actually. Wasn't much choice, but there's this one which is uh, sort of too fast, it says. It actually has a brand, Altissi. So it's a folding saw and it cost me six pounds. Looks a lot like a silky and it is actually, I'll switch there, quite long. It's got these big grooves, I assume there for moving out sawdust, so we'll give that go in a minute. And I've got one other, I've used these before, I don't like them, it's in there. You know it's one of the chainsaw chains with handles, in a bag there because of the sharp bits. And uh, only works in kind of some cases, they're hard to get going, but yeah it's basically a chainsaw chain. And this cost £3.26, so I thought why not, for a bit of fun. <laughs> I actually saw this uh, downed ash on the way in, it's across one of the tracks here. So that's going to need clearing anyway, so I may as well get a start on this one. I suppose I'll try that chain one first, because of the way it's suspended. <laughs> Sun's actually quite bright today. Alright, so here it is. Don't lose that. And these chainsaw chains tend to get a little tangled. So when it's untangled, there we go, you will get it on your wrists, or I guess on your hand, thumb through, and we'll uh, see how that goes. So I need to thread this under first, get hold of both loops, and then Give it a go, I'll move that along so you can see better.
Well, it worked. I just split off that very last little bit because the chain was getting stuck. But boy, that's exhausting. <laughs> but uh, I guess it is tiny. Whew, it's left me out of breath. I think that's all I'm going to use that just to try it out. I think I'm going to use the uh, fake silky for the rest. Crack of this tree should help uh, keep it steady while I saw. I'm uh, doing bits because of something else I've got to show you. Slippery. Too bad, it's not got that silky smooth cut, but it works. Bit warm doing that. <laughs> that saw wasn't too bad at all. I'm gonna have to do some more off camera in a bit, but um, yeah, it wasn't bad at all really. A few of you have asked um, in the past why I stopped using a silky saw, and it's the, the hand position that you're usually in. It's not natural compared to like this with a bow saw. That's my main reason. Also, the silky blades are quite specialist to dry wood, green wood, blah blah blah, whereas the barco blades are a bit more universal, I find. <sighs> Right, I'll show you why I'm collecting the wood. Believe it or not, in that backpack is a fire pit. Now some of you may have seen these before. I've seen them before. It's never really oh, appealed to me, but I thought may as well try it out in this video. It's got a carry case. Not bad. The legs and <laughs> the pit. I've got no idea how to set this up, but I've just pulled these sections out of this. These ones are screwed on, and I'm going to assume that they all turn the same direction and the others slot in. That would appear to be the frame, and it's just to uh, secure this kind of fireproof mat on now, which I think you do by squeezing that through there and then through the actual pipes, poles, like so. As far as I can tell, that is that. That takes some weight, seems to, and uh, should be able to breathe through this mesh, I guess. So the weird fire pit, which comes with a spare one of them little uh, wire things, cost me 12 pounds. One piece foldable portable stainless steel fire pit, camping and outdoors or barbecue grill rack and firewood stand and stove heat resistant. Catchy title. <laughs> yeah, 12 pounds. Now I've got free shipping with my order because of the amount I spent, but there is like a handling fee for some reason. So my total, there is more things to come, is 275 pounds and 18 pence. The handling fee is 41 pounds. Okay, I'm back in the tent now and I've got my lamp, my lantern. Um, this was £5.25. Some of you may recognise this. I already actually had one, so I didn't have to buy this. I saved myself a few quid, but they sell it. Um, and it's a good little lamp. It's not too big. It folds down. This is like a carabiner for hooking on. Um, it's also a power bank. And, uh, yeah, it seems to last long enough. It's got the button on the back there got all your modes and um, I quite like it. I do also have a headlamp for later as well, I'll show you that as it's getting darker. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Right, there was no axes on Sheen so I've had to bring my Holtfuss axe.
coming over very cold. <laughs> Wind's picking up, sun's got in. Yep, I'm just gonna sort a bit more firewood out and I'll show you some more stuff. Well, do some campfire cooking as well, of course. Ash is such a beautiful wood. Can't wait to actually build something out of it, really. Like harvested ash, not like store bought ash. But yeah, so nice. Got some really nice straight bits down there. I've got a little bit of an idea for a build, but I do have that other one to go back to first. So when I was looking for knives on Sheen, I found like a survival kit. I had a picture of a knife, ferro rod, compass, etc. in it. And this is it, it was like £5.75, which, you know, isn't unusual to find these weird cheap prices. So I got it, I opened it up, and there was nothing in it. That's just my cutlery. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an empty box. Always read them descriptions, although they're also, you know, very uh, misleading. So yeah, I've got a fake otter box, but uh, no knife. So I've brought my BPS knife. Same as with the inflatable one, I think it should have centre points on the sides to peg out. This is very similar to that one. It's got me really worried because that really leaked. <laughs> okay, I need a brew. I just went and cut another bit of wood that will fit in the stove. And it's in this little pouch bag here. And uh, it's actually quite big. Ground is getting muddier and muddier here as I'm walking over it. So it's got a stand which is a little bit oh stiff and the main body just unfolds that should sit in there quite nicely then we've got either a grill or a pot rest that will go on top and that will help keep that shape as well so this stove was 34 pounds you could use this as a mini fire pit as well if you don't want to scar the ground or you're on dry ground so not bad price really, it's not lightweight or anything, but uh, yeah, not too bad. So in here, we should have a kettle. Let's get this out. Now it's modelled after them kind of eagle kettles. It's got silicon on the handles. So you can keep it on a branch and do that if you've got it over a fire. It's very small, you can hardly believe that's one litre. Maybe it's 750 mil or something. Yeah, it fits on with them on their inwards position. Let's get a brew on. I'm gonna light this in here, a bit out of the wind. Big old feed hole on this, look at that. So if I put a couple of bits of wood in there and then start laying some across. Fill the kettle. What say fill? Some flames flying out the back of this. <laughs> Guess it's the wind. Almost looks like it was made for it, doesn't it? So the kettle is apparently 1.5 litres, deceptive if it is, um, it cost £15, which is really not that bad, I can't see anything wrong with it to be honest, I'm going to keep hold of that. The 
could have been a tiny bit hotter. <laughs> ah, it's still very nice though. So I'm just going to sit here with my back rest and uh, watch this fire in the stove burn down before I get everything ready for the evening. Probably an hour of light left. It's just going below the tree line now. It's uh, pretty cold actually. Uh, kind of half wish I bought my bigger jacket. Never mind. So yeah, the stove's quite good actually. Um, if you're not having to hike miles, maybe it's in the truck or something, it's, it's quite big, big enough to be like a little fire pit. So we'll uh, see how this other fire pit goes. I may have to default to it if the wind gets up too much. We'll see how it goes. I put my stuff sack pillow with thermals in. I brought my fancy cushion pillow and my dog bowl, which is for putting keys and stuff in, and uh, close this up so it doesn't get buggy. I'm cold, so I'm gonna get this fire going. I'm gonna use three fire lighters just to make sure. And use them little bits that I trim down. See that wind. Fire reflector would have been good. Remember this? This is the light from uh, Wish.com that I also used on the Timu camp. But why not bring it along? Nothing's catching over this side because of the wind. I'm sure we get there eventually. Now, because this is a raised fire pit and everything down here is very cool to the touch, I am going to, I don't need to, but I'm going to turn it so the other side starts to burn. It's not necessary, but my peace of mind. It's quite handy being able to move it actually. I've moved it a couple of times already for shots and stuff, but uh, I can move it closer to myself if I'm uh, colder. Yeah, I prefer a ground fire, but when it's this muddy and wet, this is quite handy. Also when it's dry, obviously. But uh, all set up now, always good. It's starting to get dark as you can see, so I'll uh, well, I say I'll get some embers to cook on. Will it get embers in there? Is there so much air coming up through the bottom? This wind? We'll see what we can do. I've got a fire anchor with me to cook on. Obviously, you can't put like a grill on there. So a uh, fire anchor is going to give me a grill a bit higher than the fire. Check this out. This is my head torch. <laughs> £2.67. And I got it just because of how ridiculous it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Look how big it is. Does it articulate? Not really. No. It's got a clip on it. No? Yes. But uh, it's got the um, headband and a USB cable. I've charged it up. This thing is feather light. I um, don't have high hopes for it lasting long, so I have brought my other one with me. Oh no, and it's an over the head one. I hate them. <laughs> it's a miner or something. What does it say about it? Strobe, all bright, four side light, XPE high. <laughs> How do I turn it on? Oh. Two. Don't know what that is. Oh, sorry about that. Well, fire pit seems to be working. Just the wind's a bit of a pain. I think this chair is probably better as a replacement for a kneeling pad with an added benefit than it is uh, a replacement for a chair. Oh no! Oh, I'm right down low for preparing dinner. 
I just knocked the fire pit over. So I've had to get my leather gloves and put the ashes and stuff back on. I think my coat caught it. It is very light. All right, I just need to get some onion ready. And uh, I've got some chicken. We're uh, all Mexican this trip. It's a dinner and breakfast in the morning. If I can cook it under that awning in the rain. <laughs> it's all Mexican. Just get this. And we'll just put this into some slices. You can hear the uh, pheasants going off. Let's see how well I'm anchored. Oh, no, I've got to find a better spot. That's too stony. Found a better spot. Moved the fire pit to next to the tent rather than in front of it. Okay, so onions frying away. I'm going to add in some chicken fires that have been deboned. And then pheasants are still going mad. That chicken and the onions browned off a bit. I've got some uh, chipotle paste. So uh, put a whole bunch of that in. Probably seasoned, but I'll give it a bit of salt and pepper anyway. And a drizzle of water as well. A little bit more. Okay, it's going to evaporate off. And we'll uh, cook that down a bit more slowly, cook that chicken through, and move on to the next stage. Take this silly thing off and put my hat back on. <laughs> Away from the fire now. Got some beers with me for tonight. And any IPA, um, New England IPA, I believe. And it's another tiny rebel. I had some tiny rebels last week because they sold, sent me some. And uh, I've got a couple of weird ones, so I thought I'd start off with uh, an easy one. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> With that chicken cooked through and a lot of that water now evaporated, I'm going to add in, I don't know how much, some uh, cream cheese. Make this a creamier mixture. And uh, attempt to get that mixed into the sauce. Just leave that to cook a little longer. And then it's stage two. Now I've got with me some corn tortillas. I didn't actually make these ones. I usually do, but uh, I took the easy option because I was uh, buying some ingredients for tomorrow's breakfast. Can only get at an international shop and I saw these. So I thought, why not? Save me a job. But because of the temperature, they are pretty stiff and I need them pliable. So I'm going to put them on the grill, take that chicken off. Right, off comes the chicken. And just for a second, I'm going to warm through the tortillas. I'm not going to lie, these uh, didn't get that soft. It is what it is, I will do what I can. So I'm making taquitos basically. They're, yeah, they're not going to roll. I think I have to make them into some kind of taco instead. Oh, look at that though. Yeah, they're a bit brittle, these. 
Oh well. Can't win them all, should have made my own. Got a tiny bit of oil in the pan here. I'm going with them tacos. Shame they broke, but that's what happens when you outsource. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to have to do these two at a time, I think. Ooh, a couple of bits of chicken escaped. I've got my taquito tacos. Never done this before, actually. The cream cheese with the chipotle and chicken. I think I got the same effect with the frying of the tacos. Hmm. I'm never buying tortillas again, not corn ones. I guess because they're imported, they've got a long way to come, but they're not that hard to make. It's just a bit time consuming. Mm hmm. It's lovely, not too spicy or anything. I've got some coriander, cilantro, and stuff with me, but. I can't be bothered to be honest, I was going to do a bit of a salsa, but I need some of that stuff for breakfast anyway. Round two. Oh, <laughs> that was really nice. I never really use cream cheese with cooking and um, yeah it's a great way to make like a creamy sauce. <laughs> Making that one again that's for sure. Now I think I'll wash it down with another tiny rebel. Tutti Frutti Ice Blast. <laughs> Tropical Ice Blast Sour. Um, I had another fruity one before from them and it was really good. Like it really is weird at first but it was nice. Let's try it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's like sherbet. That's so weird. I was not expecting that after the other one. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's like really red colour as well. It's like, um, oh god. It might be a bit sour for me. Yeah, ice blast sour. I'll see how I go with it. <laughs> I've got a normal IPA and another one from them as well. Oh, it gets me every time. Oh, it's like tangfastic. Move the fire pit over. <laughs> I still might do one more taco. I've got one more. We'll see. One more beer. <laughs> Amplified IPA, so it's quite strong, 7%. Hadouken. <laughs> Street Fighter reference. I should be able to just put this on here. Right, I'm in. I've just noticed this, well you can see, it's almost completely dead. That's why it's so light, it's got barely any battery. I've been out there three hours in the dark cooking and whatnot. I'm only coming in because the uh, wind is quite cold. But um, yeah, and that's been on and off. It's not been, you know, on the whole time. Useless. That's why it was £2.50 or whatever the hell it was. It's chilling down now and I'm not that confident with this sleeping bag but I'm sure I'm not going to die. <laughs> you just feel the cold coming through it and probably through the mat as well because there's no R value or anything. It is quite comfy though. I um, battened down some wood before getting in here for the stove in the morning. Didn't want to leave it out there if it's going to get wet. 
um, probably a couple of hours now until the rain starts uh, if, if it wakes me up which it probably will I'll uh, get a little shot or something we shall see but it's going to be raining in the morning anyway probably all morning another wet pack up <laughs> Rain's on early, it's about half past twelve. Nice to listen to, but we're gonna have a whole night of rain now. <laughs> we'll see. It's five in the morning, and um, just noticing some of the first signs of leakage. And it's one of the points I did wonder about, which was the bottom of the doors, the corners and the middle. This must be where the uh, rain is coming from. The other side seems to be okay. Good morning. Just woken up about eight o'clock just after, so it's light now. As you can hear, it's raining, and the tent is rubbish. My pillow is wet, pray from touching the window a bit here. So, my feet probably are as well. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. the foot end of the bag is wet. Uh, what? wet on the bag a bit here and there is pools of water Jesus that's a big one all around now it's not just dripping dripping all on me but uh, it is wet it's not raining as hard as when I did that Timu camp but um, I'm thinking this is the exact same material, and I couldn't find where that one was leaking. And this one, looking around, it looks like it's just permeating through the material. So we've got patches like that there, and some down the back there. You can see where the uh, mat's wet. And some big patches over here. That's where that thing is. And look, there's a big pool of water there. You can literally see where it's dripping in. Oh, there's a big pool there. There. Oh my god, look at that. Look at that down there. You can see where it's come through that rain fly, dripping onto the um, actual tent there. Pooling. All right, there's a few things here. Hopefully my trousers are dry, they look to be. <laughs> They're on top of my camera bag. Oh God. Useless. I had a suspicion, <laughs> but it's gotta be tried. Just to show you guys, don't buy this crap. Just because the tent looks like it's a good size and has a good mechanism to put up for the money doesn't mean it's a good deal I wouldn't even trust this in a British summer <laughs> right, I'm going to have to sort some wet stuff the, the camera is wet or as close to the side <laughs> oh great my trousers would be wet right there <laughs> Oh, it's garbage, isn't it? 
It's <laughs> absolute garbage. Oh, how wet you get just getting in and out of it, let alone putting up this awning. We'll see how well that does. <laughs> it's yeah, garbage. Oh dear. Oh. So the sleeping bag was, I think, near its comfort limit. Um, whatever it was last night, zero, one degrees. Speaking about that, why haven't I got my hat on? Oh, I didn't want to get it wet. Um, yeah, I actually uh, put my shirt on last night inside it and um, my jacket, which is on the side, I kind of threw over the top of it. Like, I wasn't freezing, I wasn't shivering, I was just a bit ooh, here and there. And this mat doesn't help at all because no R value whatsoever. Drips coming through this awning already. <laughs> hey, some fun of games. Bit of a wind as well. Today, I think there's meant to be a storm today, so this is probably the start of it. I was unaware of that. I knew it was raining. Well, well, well. Out the stove. Oh god, I've just noticed a massive pool of water in this. And it's all seeping through. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, it's dripping as well. Can you see that? Can you see how it's all seeping through? Oh, right on the... Oh. Yeah, some of that's gone in my bag. Frickin' garbage. Absolute garbage. The camera's getting wet under the uh, awning here. I'm getting wet. I'm pretty wet sitting on the uh, edge of the tent and mat that's already wet. I think it's going to be a very wet pack away. Oh, oh dear. You're struggling because the wood's wet. It'll get there. God, the wind! Some big gusts of wind coming here and there. I think they're hitting more the outside of the woodland. This isn't a massive woodland, it's surrounded by farmland. <coughs> but wow, getting a bit of smoke off this fire. Look at this awning, it's awful. So, not all of the stuff's been awful. I mean, the tent is garbage. The mat is not that bad, to be honest. Um, for summer anyway, comfort wise, it's not going to protect you from the cold coming up from the ground. The um, headlamp was terrible, the chair objectively handy, kettle's good, stove isn't too bad, it's probably got its uses, like backpacking not being one of them, car camping maybe. Um, what else did we have? The lantern, which I had already, is pretty good. Used that one quite a lot. Cold, wet hands. Oh, 
camera is soaked. <laughs> Everything's soaked. The longer I sit here, the wetter everything's getting. I had quite a good breakfast planned, but um, it may have to wait for another day. It was, uh, it's got quite a lot of prep to it. And, um, sorry, rain is loud. Now there's an airplane going over as well. Rain is getting heavier and heavier. Um, yeah, so I may wait for another day for that. May just warm myself by this fire and pack up before everything gets even worse. Oh, the bloody pole just collapsed. Too much weight pulling at that small peg and just water's gone everywhere. Oh, God damn this tent. Bloody hell. Uh, right. Desperate measures. One thing I'm... Oh god, look at the water on the lens. One thing I'm really concerned about now is my truck's in the garage at the moment, so I brought my car here. I've just pulled it into the edge of the woodland. And I'm hoping I can get it back out. <laughs> All this rain and mud. Right. Just look at the state of this now. It's a paddling pool. <laughs> Right, I'm back in the car. <laughs> I've got 50 meters or so to go. I've got to back up and then go that way. And I am worried. So BMW 1 Series is uh, rear wheel drive in the mud. <laughs> okay, we'll see. I'm so proud of my little BMW. <laughs> Spun a few times, I reversed the whole way. It just seemed the right way, really. Um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Sorry there was no breakfast, but um, I'll save that for another day. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.